Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, we're going to address this monstrosity. This is our big slab pile. So what do you do with all of these slabs that you get from the mill? So uh, probably the most obvious answer would be to uh, turn it into firewood. But if you've been watching our channel for a while and understand why we've created such a large pile of slabs, you'll know that majority of this is either Virginia pine or tulip poplar. So um, neither of those two species do I burn for firewood inside the house. Obviously you don't want pine burning just because of the sap content. You know, there's some of you guys out west burn that. That's all you burn is evergreen. But uh, sap content is a little too high, burns too fast. Same with poplar. Tulip poplar burns up really quick. Um, I like it as a campfire wood because it puts off a good light, but uh, not, not a fireplace or not an inside heat wood. So we're going to skip the firewood step. There is, there's maybe four or five pieces in here that are white oak. If we come across those, we may cut them up for firewood. But most of the stuff is not going to make good firewood. Now some of the thicker ones, um, or more even, more uniform ones, I've used in the past for building projects. Like if you're going to use, uh, if you just needed some temporary corral walls or things you weren't worried about them lasting too long, then you could throw some of those up. And I've done that in the past on some of our corrals. If I needed a quick, quick gate or a quick wall to build, I could come over here and grab some of them. Um, obviously, the longer this sits, the more it decays. Uh, I've also used them in the garden. You've seen in some of our videos where I uh, lay some of these down for uh, paths. So weed control and paths uh, along our beds. And of course, that keeps the weeds down, gives us a place to walk. And over time, obviously, they decay and become part of the garden soil. But obviously, way too many here to put in the garden. Well, probably one of the easiest ways to get rid of that big pile is just light it on fire and burn it. And we could dance around it like heathens. Um, not really what I want to do. That seems to be a lot of waste. Obviously, put off a ton of heat and it would burn for days. But um, I really don't want to do that. I don't want to waste all of that uh, great carbon material when we have the means to make it more useful. So I think with a plan we're going to do, with the help of my beautiful crew, is we're going to take a lot of these slabs put them back on the mill, and we're gonna mill them down to the dimensions that I can run through my six inch wood chipper. So some of these uh, some of these slabs could be 12, 14 inches wide. So we're just gonna put a whole bunch of them up vertically on the mill, pass every five inches. So me at 15, at 10, at five, and uh, take all of that, toss it on our project trailer here that still doesn't have a deck on it yet, but it'll definitely carry slab pieces. Gonna load that up. And then um, when we get a pile big enough we want to mess with, we'll, we'll go down to where we want to have wood chips in front of our big chicken coop and we'll chip away. So come join us.
The plan is to uh, put a lot of wood chips here for the winter where the chickens like to uh, make all this muddy and in and out. And this eventually will be a garden area as well, all the way down past my trailer where we have wood chips from last year. Kelly in her low range. Give me time to narrate. It was a dark and stormy one. I'll stay back here. Excrement. All right, so the test today, this is a six inch chipper, uh, Titan chipper. We've talked about it ad nauseum. Um, thing I realized taking these boards off, cutting them at five inches, at least some of these things are like five by five. Uh, so this would be a really good test. You, know, you think a six inch round stock going into a chipper. You really don't think about square, five inch square. So uh, we'll see how many shear pins we go through in the... <laughs> that takes a little bit of butt to turn that thing. I'm going to shoot it right in the chicken's hole. <laughs> Eat wood chips, chickens. Where? Well, that's one of those plans that uh, look good on paper in, or in theory, uh, but didn't quite work out. So the uh, Titan cannot handle the square stock. 
uh, the thicker stock. And in all fairness, I'm using these green bolts as shear pins. Here's the dilemma I run into. A regular shear pin doesn't quite fit that, like you go to Tractor Supply or Rural King and buy a shear pin. Uh, this, these green bolts are actually one or two grades higher in, uh, in tensile strength. Uh, obviously, you go all the way up to grade eight, but they don't recommend doing that, of course, because it busts your drive shaft. So uh, this is a, th I think this is a three eighths inch. I have to look, but it's got just a little bit of slop in that shear pin yoke. So anytime we hit a little bump, anytime the the wheel would kind of just bump after hitting a knot, then it would take some slack off, and you could see it shear it. So uh, we went through what? How many pins we go through? Three. Yeah. So putting the fourth pin in, it's like eh. Let's, let's punt until I can either get better pins or uh, figure out a different game plan. So, um, yeah, not, not the greatest, obviously, but uh, part of it. We're going to spread some uh, chips that we did make out and hopefully cure some of our mud issues. All right, take care, everybody.